What about they pierce my hands and feet? The New Testament misquotes that. The New Testament gets it wrong. Actually, I was doing a TV debate many years ago in Florida. There were two Messianic Jews, myself, so three of us, and then three rabbis. An Orthodox rabbi, a conservative rabbi, and reform rabbi. It's quite an interesting mix. The Orthodox rabbi was a Hasidic rabbi, ultra-Orthodox Jew. And as we were having this debate, there was, there was a live audience there watching it. He says the New Testament misquotes the Psalms, and it says they pierce my hands and feet, but the Hebrew says like a lion they're at my hands and feet. And I said to him, uh, that's not quoted in the New Testament. That's not quoted in the New Testament. This is a live TV debate. And he goes, it's not? So quickly I thought, okay, wait, it's not, right? It's not. Just making sure. I mean, you're sure about it until you're challenged. It's like you quote a phone number you've given a hundred times, and then you start to think about it. It's like, is, did I get that right? So uh, I, I quick in my mind did a little concordance check, and I said, no, it's not. Not once. And it, he kind of was a little shaken by it. And I said, you know, you, you, and he pulls out this book, this counter-missionary book, starts flipping through it. I said, I said, you don't want to rely on that. I said, you need to go straight to God's Word, to the New Testament. Now, Psalm 22 is quoted in the New Testament. They, 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 they cast lots from my garments and divided them. That happened to Messiah on the cross. Never happened to David. Never happened to David. And, and Yeshua hanging on the cross quotes it in, in Aramaic, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Aramaic is as transliterated in, in the Greek. In Hebrew, Eli, Eli, Lama Zavtani. Why have you forsaken me? He draws our attention to Psalm 22. But that verse, they pierced my hands and feet, isn't even quoted in the New Testament. The question is, is it accurate? Many Christian translations have it. We'll look at that. So first thing I want to point out is that the sufferings that are spoken of here in Psalm 22 really transcend anything that David experienced. It looks like he's given over to death. He, he, it looks like he's being abandoned by God. And people are mocking him. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him. For he delights in him. These very words of scorn were heaped on Yeshua as he hung on the cross by the religious leaders. Oh, yeah. Son of God. Oh, yeah. Where's God to deliver you now, boy? This is what happened. And yet the psalmist expresses his confidence in God that you're the one who took me from the womb. And he says this in verse 12. Many bulls encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their, their mouths at me like a, a ravening and roaring lion. I'm poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my, stung my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Now, all that literally happened to Yeshua. He's hanging there, crucified. His, his hands and feet pierced and ripped through with nails. He's nailed to the cross. His garments divided, the people mocking him. This literally happens. And then it continues. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. Oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You've rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. And now, obviously, deliverance has come. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or poured the affliction of the afflicted. And he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. He's been delivered from the jaws of death. For you, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. Remember what? My deliverance from the jaws of death. They'll, they'll hear this story. When did that ever happen in the life of David? When did that happen in the, in the lives of any of, of his descendants or others, of psalm writers, where the deliverance from death was so great that all the ends of the earth will remember it and turn to the Lord? Happened with the Messiah, my friend. 
happened with his deliverance from death itself and his resurrection. And multitudes, hundreds of millions from around the world have turned to him and continue to turn to him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. Thou shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. What? Delivered me from the jaws of death. Well, it works wonderfully well when Messiah now takes it on himself and brings that psalm to fulfillment. But what about they pierced my hands and my feet? Actually, this is not a Jewish Christian issue. It's a Jewish Jewish issue. I'll tell you the truth. Let me explain. The vast, vast, vast majority of our Masoretic texts, there is not one Masoretic text, but thousands of manuscripts in the Masoretic textual tradition. The vast, vast majority read Ka'ari Yadavaragla. Like a lion, my hands and feet. Now, the, the problem, the, the problem is, is this, that when you look at it contextually, it, something seems to be missing. So let's, let's just look at this together, all right? So, so we start back, he, he, he's, he's poured out to death, his, his tongue cleaving to the roof of his mouth. Kisvavuni klavim, dogs have surrounded me, adant mereim, hikifuni, assembly of, of the wicked encompasses me, kari adav ragla. Like a lion, my hands and feet. Well, Rashi says, like a lion, they're mauling his hands and feet. Well, that works for me, fine. Like a lion, they maul my hands and feet. If it means like a lion, it doesn't mean licking. Like a lion, they lick my hands and feet. No, no, they maul, they tear, they, they bite, scratch. So that, that would be an excellent description of what happens in crucifixion. But, but, the oldest translation that we have of these words is the Septuagint, the Greek translation. And it renders with they, they pierce or they bore through. That's interesting. Then the oldest Hebrew manuscript we have of this, a copy of the Psalms, that's part of the Psalms from the Dead Sea Scrolls, it, it has a vav instead of a yud. It's very close in Hebrew, but, but those studying it carefully recognize it's a yud, ka'aru, which would also be something like they, they dug through or bore through. Hmm. And then there are a number of manu Masoretic manuscripts, just a handful, but a number that also read Ka'aru or Karu. Again, they dug through, bore through. So the oldest translation, the oldest manuscript, and some Masoretic predictions read a verb that would be more like they bore through or they dug through my hands and feet. So either way, either like a lion, they maul my hands and feet, or they, they dug through, bore through, which would be pierced, that's how we get pierced, my hands and feet. Either way, a very, very vivid description that would find fulfillment in the crucifixion. But I just ask you a question. If it's not Yeshua, if it doesn't refer to his death and his resurrection, then please, pray tell, explain to me how this psalm is fulfilled. The deliverance of whom from the jaws of death is so great that the ends of the earth come and worship the God of Israel. And that the people celebrate that he has done it. Oh, when it applies to the Messiah, it makes perfect sense.